Hey everybody, it's Jason here, and this is the TasteBetter.com weekly newsletter for Monday, March 15th, 2010, and we are going to be talking today about taking things one meal at a time. And I want to welcome everybody for watching or listening to this, if you're on the multimedia version. And two weeks ago, we discussed an idea called Your Ideal Life Starts With Breakfast, and that time we did a simple but powerful exercise to start thinking about how to improve your lives right now. And I got to say, I didn't expect such amazing feedback, so I'm really happy you enjoyed it so much. And uh, if you go to, if you get the email, you get the link to the newsletter. Uh, if you're just watching on the multimedia version and you want to see that previous exercise, uh, just send me an email, jason at tastebetter.com, and I will hook you up. But after all that, and we had the great feedback, and we did the exercise, and life was good, then there was nothing. Uh, no newsletter last week. And I'm sorry about that, but I'll be totally honest. I couldn't bring myself to send out a follow up about Ideal Breakfast when I, frankly, I haven't had, I just hadn't managed to have one myself yet. And there's two big takeaways that I got from that non newsletter that I want to share with you. And the first one is that these things, they take time. So give yourself a lot of it, give yourself permission to not get it all perfect the first time. And the second thing is just, you know, I'm no further ahead than you are in this. This is all really new stuff and I'm really excited to share it with you, but you know, there's going to be some stumbles along the way. But the important part of that is, you know, if we do this together, we're not alone. Uh, so two big things. So miss the newsletter. Sorry about that, but feel a lot better about sending out this week. Uh, and this week I want to drill a little deeper into the ideas we talked about in that ideal meal exercise. But first let's set things up. Food is so much more than nourishment. All right, think about this. Our biology is tuned to the timing of our meals, so our mood and energy levels line up exactly with our personal feeding schedules. Like, have you ever noticed how cranky you get if you skip lunch? Or, you know, if you have a, do the opposite, and you have a really heavy meal around noon? Have you ever noticed how drowsy you can get around 2 p.m.? Food forms the basis of many of our social connections, too. Just think back to how many conversations you've had over a meal or a snack or a drink in the past week versus how many interactions you had that didn't involve food. Uh, most of you, food was a central part of all that, or at least a tangential thing. It was present during that, and I think that's an important thing. If you cook regularly, you know, just think about how many senses you're engaging at once on an activity your body knows is good for it. And there's this positive feedback loop. You know, for a lot of us, this is the only time our sense of smell isn't something we regret having. Uh, our sense of touch is fully engaged, you know, feeling that rich range of textures as we wash fruits and vegetables. We get to practice our fine motor skills while we cut and mix. And of course, our eyes are fully engaged looking at the great meal being formed before us. You know, and that starts up a whole range of pre-digestive processes. And if we're in a restaurant, you know, the same things apply. There's that relaxing joy of knowing that everything's being taken care of and the anticipation you feel when you see something in the corner of your eye, you know, see someone carrying plates in your direction. Hey, is that my meal or is it somebody else's? And hey, why does that meal always look more interesting than what we ordered? And don't worry, those people are thinking the same thing about your plate too. Like, as I said last time, we eat three to six meals a day on average. And by the way, I highly recommend six meals a day. Not only is it more chances to enjoy food, but your energy levels are going to stay more consistent and your metabolism is going to typically run higher. And the trick some people miss, though, is to make sure that the, uh, the meals are smaller if you're having six a day. Don't try and have twice as much food by doubling your meals and doubling your food. Cut the meal size, the portions in half. And by the way, full disclosure again, I personally only managed to get like multiple meals a day, like around five or six, maybe twice a week. So that's something I'm working on too, but highly recommended. Every time I do it, feels great. I just haven't found the key to, uh, to making it work yet. When I do, I'll share it. If you have any ideas, please share them with me. But I can't think of anything we do more consistently than eat. And it's something that you have in common with just about everyone you know. Regardless of what they're particularly eating, people eat. That's just what we do. And it makes sense to me to make meals the anchor that the rest of our lives are based on. So in the last newsletter, you spent some time thinking about what each of these meals are like. And if you haven't done that yet, please take five minutes to review the last one. And after reading uh, this week's ideas or hearing about them, as it were, in the multimedia version, uh, you might want to try doing that exercise again. But, you know, in the meantime, how many of you, since it's been two weeks, how many of you have made small changes to move closer to your ideal meal? Small changes to one ideal meal. Let me know, jason at tastebetter.com. Now, I recommend starting your day with breakfast and starting this exercise with breakfast too. Obviously, you're going to start your day with breakfast. But partly, 
it makes that whole uh, theme make sense because your ideal life starts with breakfast. Well, if breakfast is the first meal, then yeah, okay, that makes it so this isn't just a dumb gimmick. But also, it's the meal that's easiest to control, I think, before life steps in and throws you curveballs all day. Uh, you know, you start off with great intentions. I'm going to have an ideal dinner. I'm going to have an ideal dinner. And by the time dinner comes, you've been knocked six ways from Sunday, typically. It's just the way life is. And the whole point about putting this meal structure in place is that maybe we can fix some of that. So how can you make your breakfast more ideal? So for me, I really like the idea of sampling from a big plate of fresh fruit in the morning. And I'll be honest here, I rarely do that myself, as I said. What I'm working on this week is based on this whole uh, how to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables idea that I had on tastebetter.com. I'm going to be making sure I have fruit cleaned and cut the night before, so I just have to take it out of the fridge and put it on a plate in the morning. You know, it's still fresh fruit in my mind. Uh, you know, it's been in the fridge for a couple hours. And, you know, honestly, I think also in the morning, one of my blocks, I was kind of hesitant to use a knife when I'm not fully awake. And by the way, I did this uh, last night slash this morning. I had uh, pineapple and blueberries, set it all up the night before, and uh, finally had my ideal breakfast. Finally, after two weeks of talking about this stuff, uh, and it was awesome. So I don't know what you need to do to achieve your ideal breakfast, but if you need help, remember, we're in this together. Uh, send me a mail, jason at tastebetter.com, telling me a bit more about it, and we can brainstorm some ideas. And once you get your ideal breakfast sorted out, you've got two choices. You can work on the next meal or snack that comes after breakfast, second breakfast if you want, or you can work on a different meal. And I recommend focusing on the last meal of the day. That's what I'm working on after I get breakfast sorted out. And there's two reasons. First of all, I've said this before, self-discipline is a muscle. And just like dieting, it gets harder and harder to maintain your willpower as the day goes on. And the results can be disastrous by dinner time. A really healthy first half of the day shouldn't bring about the worst dinners ever. So instead, let's sneak up on the day by surrounding it with awesomeness. Secondly, you're going to be starting and ending the day on your terms if you do this. And sure, you might slip terribly in between breakfast and dinner or evening snack or whatever the last meal you choose to be is, but this is going to create bookends in the parts of your day that are typically most under your control. And I know it might sound silly that eating good meals we're going to, is going to bring everything else that you desire into your world, but honestly, I don't think it's that far-fetched. It's a matter of having a basic level of control over your environment, and that can spread like a virus. As we discussed, food is a really high leverage part of the day to have control over, so I really want you to give this a try. In the last newsletter, it was a little more high concept, so I hope that this one steers you more to action. Uh, I'm not sure where we're going to take this idea from here, but I'd love to hear your stories. Like, did you have an ideal breakfast this week? Uh, even just one? I've had one. That's one, but it says Monday, so I've got six more coming up. I hope. Uh, but you know, as I found, it's really not that easy. So let me know if there's a way that I or the other readers can help because we can share these ideas. Anyway, so that is the second part of our Ideal Life Starts With Breakfast series, and I hope it helps for you guys. And I want to thank you guys a lot. Uh, thanks for being patient with me as I occasionally miss a week for as I try and sort this stuff out. Uh, but thanks for reading these ideas, providing your feedback. Our Facebook group, Facebook group, sorry, is starting to get some so much fun. Uh, the commentary on that is really getting lively. I'm really appreciating that. And just the simple notes of encouragement, you know, these things, they take you all of five seconds to write. They mean the world to me, honestly. And I, I really get a lot out of this. As you see, we're all learning together here. So if you just stumbled onto this thing, uh, please, I encourage you to sign up for the uh, Taste Better newsletter. It comes to your inbox every Monday on average. Um, that's at tastebetter.com slash newsletter. And, uh, if you're already subscribed to it, you know, please consider forwarding it to some friends uh, because I hope that what you're learning here is stuff that not only you want to try yourself, but you know other people that can benefit from this. And as always, that newsletter is sent out from my personal email address. Uh, it's just jason at tastebetter.com if you're listening to this one right now on the multimedia. Uh, so if you want to get in touch about anything, you just get in touch with me and we'll... Uh, We'll see what's going on. Mondays are usually a busy day because I tend to get a lot of mail uh, Monday afternoons after these things go out, but uh, I try and reply to everybody as quickly as I can. If you want to get in touch in other ways, there is always the good old Twitter. Facebook, as I mentioned, is really doing some exciting stuff, and we've got the videos showing up on YouTube. So please stay in touch, keep in touch, let me know what you're thinking, and let me know what I can help you with, and we can all grow together. Thanks so much, and we will see you next week. This time for sure. Yep. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Have a great week, guys.